Uh, are there any Star Trek fans in by any chance? No. No? Yeah, I've heard a couple of years. Thanks for the support there. Are there any football fans in? There's quite more football fans than Star Trek fans. See, this, this is, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Trekkie, right? I'm a sad bastard. And uh, the thing I, I don't understand about football fans is, football fans just can't deal with the fact that someone else might not like football. You know what I mean? Yeah, somebody would walk up to you at a bar. I used to be a barman years ago when people come to me and start talking about football. They had a fucking breeze that they were talking about. You know, they why went up and started talking to people on the street about Star Trek. <laughs> I was like, oh, were you, were, you, were you watching the Federation Dominion War last night? <laughs> well, Cleon's about like, oh, it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> you know, people put the, the tricolour out their window in Ireland they're playing. Why? Who are they trying to show support for? The Irish team can't see it. They're abroad playing a fucking football match. They're basically just telling other people in Ireland that they support Ireland. Like, it's a fucking surprise to us. <laughs> I sat glued to the edge of my seat for the final ten episodes of Deep Space Nine. Do you know what would have happened if I'd have stuck a United Federation of Planets flag out my window? I would have had small children fucking rocks through it. That's what would have fucking happened. But there are a couple of things that bug me out of Star Trek, and I am going to talk to you about it as revenge for anyone that's ever talked to me about football. Now, I will explain everything here for any known Trekkies in the crowd, or as they're more commonly known, women. Um, but... They, they have this thing in Star Trek. They, they have this thing in Star Trek called a replicator. Now, what a replicator is is it's the size and shape of a microwave oven, but it produces food and drink out of thin air. You often see the captain in it. He goes up to it, "Gee, very very hot. Here's a cup of tea." Am I the only person watching this thinking, "Why is everybody in Star Trek still sober? What's going, what's going on here?" And then I figured, that's why you never see Ireland in Star Trek, right? <laughs> Basically, Ireland of the 24th century is this walled-off little nation of drunks <laughs> walking around with replicators under their arms. <laughs> and you're going, Hey, oh, boss, can I plug this in here? Oh, I'm nice one. 18 Dutch gold! <laughs> that's your fucking Ireland of the future. But, but the other thing they have is... Uh, in Star Trek, there's a thing called a holodeck. Now, what a holodeck is, is it's a, it's a small, empty room where you can produce holographic characters that you can interact with and touch and feel and what have you. You can even have sex with them. And they do use them for sexual purposes in Star Trek. What happens is a guy will create his perfect woman, shag her senseless. When he's finished, he just goes, end program, and she disappears in thin air. He fucks off back to work. Right, perfect relationship, I mean. <laughs> My problem with that is... If you just shag the holographic woman, show the end program, and she disappears in the thin air, are you left with a ball of spunk in midair that just falls to the ground? <laughs> That's a genuine scientific question. I think we need answers. Uh, 